Hey, Give sexy. Give me a Santa. Chicken. Nuggets. I'm starting a vlog. Okay. They can hear about the nuggets. Okay. I am starting a vlog. It's me, CJ. Welcome back. This is gonna be a themed vlog because the Discord Dungeon Master. Because I have some updates regarding Discord. Uh, the book hotties and I, including senior and junior, so you know me, Kieran, Hannah, Grace, Jalen, Iggy, Ben, and Rebecca all decided to start a Discord together because we thought it would be fun, like a giant group chat with some of our subscribers, and we have like threads there. It's all very overwhelming, and it's linked in my bio below if you want to join. It's fun. People are using it um, way more than I thought they would, so loving that discord culture it feels like slack which i use constantly for work but on steroids so it's a whole thing it's a whole thing uh finding ways to build community right that's that's the thing anyway we have a slack not a slack channel i'm gonna say that so much we have a discord channel in there called hot takes and i had a hot take okay i had a hot take that said Quote on quote, adults who only read YA, being young adult, dot 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 dot, why? I think that's a valid hot take. I have a lot of thoughts about, <laughs> I mean I have no thoughts. Do you have any thoughts? I don't have any thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts about why I said that and what has formed my opinion skew in I guess the judgment of adults who only read YA being in these book spaces online and Sage the brilliant smart Sage fellow booktuber is in the discord made a really good response video Sage is a homie no shade at Sage at all they talked to me about the video before they posted it I got to watch it a smart, well-informed, really nuanced, and like thoughtful take on my blanket statement, right? My blanket statement that didn't have a, a lot of nuance. Uh, so watch Sage's video below, I'll post it. They acknowledge that my original statement isn't really what their video turned out being about. Um, their video was more specifically about queer YA and how that is important for, what is the word? Temporal healing in marginalized communities, specifically the queer community. So that's some context. I hope you can hear me with Kiki in the background. It's not my fault that you always <laughs> spill the blog while I'm putting away the groceries. Oh my God. It's almost every week, I feel like. Yeah. Because I've been showing off my vegetables. Any vegetables? No, they're all put away. They're all put away. Okay, so that- oh, We got taco seasoning. That's the context for the Discord. Crackers. The theme of this vlog, which is going to be CJ Reads YA. Wow. Uh, we just went to the mall and to Target and grocery shopping, obviously. You know us, our suburban domesticity. And Sage recommended me two YA books to read. One I got from the library and one I got from Barnes and Noble. Yes, I'm on a book buying ban, but I didn't technically buy this with my own money because when I saw my mom, she gave me some money um, to have fun with on vacation because she's my mom and she loves me. So technically my mom bought this book and it was only $10 and I had 10% off at Barnes and Noble. So. That's my justification of why this book is here. Sage recommended two other books over this, but they know that I love a quick game as he's writing. And I thought this is like setting me up for success, right? I'm like, this one's probably gonna be a banger. I know what I'm walking into. I really respect Mezzi as an author. And after I read this, I will have read all of their work, which I also think is really interesting because it's across multiple genres being memoir, YA, and literary fiction. So I picked up Pet First, and that's what I'm gonna read. Tiny little guy, should be able to fly through it. The words are big. Don't know what it's about, but I'm gonna read it. Wow, what an intro, are you exhausted? I'm exhausted. Uh, Kiki, are you exhausted? 
I'm so tired. Yeah. Okay. CJ reads YA for the first time. I'll intersperse some other collected thoughts I have God, about. I got tin foil. Oh my god. I will intersperse some other collected thoughts I have about specific points in Sage's video they made that I want to talk about. Just not right now while I'm unloading groceries, okay? Okay, bye, love you. I'm gonna be honest, I fell asleep for three hours and now we're gonna go to the bar to meet our friends. <coughs> so, see you when I get back. You want me to drive your car? No, I want you to drive your car. I'm back from the bar with my friends and I had one beer. And I had one beer. I had onion rings for dinner and now I'm eating banana cake from New Seasons. If you're a Portland local, you know. You know about the New Seasons banana cake. Uh, I'm gonna keep reading Pet. Might check in later, but it's 9 p.m. so I might also fall asleep. I read one chapter of it so far. Uh, very heavy for a YA book. Hello and happy Sunday, everyone. Had a full day already. I got my nails done. Very cute, right? We're doing like the multicolored French tip. Long nail alert. Loving it. That took two hours. I really wish I could chop my hands off for my body and leave them at the nail salon and pick them up when they're ready, but I can't. So... <laughs> I do, it's so terrible getting your nails done. It's just like very boring. Um, I'm back home now and I'm going to pick up Pet again. I only got to chapter one last night to the end of it. So I'm gonna pick up chapter two, get in the groove again and report back and hopefully have something to say about YA, which is the point of this video, right? Right, see you soon. Okay, so I'm 50 pages into Pet. Interesting read, interesting read. I don't know if I like it. I read primarily to learn or to experience someone's art. I don't often read to be entertained. I'm trying to go about this in like the least snooty, classist, uppity way possible, but I'm just trying to be honest about the reasons I enjoy reading and spending time with books, right? I'm not saying one type of reader or like what you get out of reading is better than the other, like absolutely not at all. Um, but I think that distinction of what kind of reader you are and in turn what kind of books that make you pick up is important and part of my reasoning of why I don't gravitate towards YA because I don't read for entertainment. I don't read for escapism as an adult really. That's neither good or bad, that is just a fact, right? So. As I'm getting into this YA novel, Pet, we follow a girl named Jam. They're living in a town called Lucille with their parents who are artists. And in this town, all of the monsters have been banished by angels. And I'm pretty sure monsters and angels are a metaphor for like, repression of any kind, racism at large, any kind of injustices going on is what the stand-in for monsters are, right? And all of that was banished during a revolution led by angels. So Pet is really curious about this revolution, these monsters that don't exist anymore, but she's heard of her whole life and she is seeking out more knowledge about them. Like as an adult, number one, I'm like, why are we not just naming the things as they should be named? I.e. whatever metaphor angels and monsters are supposed to be, right? Like, I don't know as an adult what I'm supposed to get out of that. 
other than like a fantasy world building vibe because I think it's more powerful usually to name things as they are. That's my perspective reading this entire story so far as an adult. From a young adult's perspective, I can see more grounds for stylizing this a little bit more, right? Clouding these things in myth, in world building, in fantasy. But as an adult, I don't know if I like reading fiction like that. There's a lot of talk in this book right now about good versus bad, a lot of breaking of like the binaries at large. Jam is, I believe, a gender non-conforming or trans kid that talks a little bit briefly in the first chapter about her identifying as a girl, being a girl. So this is weird. This is weird. I don't know what I'm supposed to be getting from it. And I think it's important that I started with a Quaking Mezzi's work because I've read Freshwater and The Death of Vivek OG and the contrast of being able to read a Quake's writing in books that are intended for adult audiences versus the streamlining or simplification or just like pruning of words that naturally happen when you're speaking to a younger audience. I don't love that. I don't love that. I don't know, this is mystical, weird, fantasy driven I would say, maybe a little sci-fi vibes. And we'll keep reading, we'll keep learning more about these characters. There's a lot of weird stuff going on, so those are some thoughts about why in general and why certain kinds of readers maybe wouldn't gravitate towards this as adults. Does that make sense? Sage, you're so much more eloquent than I am. But that's my thoughts thus far. I've been talking for five minutes. Bye! Happy Monday, recording live from my lunch break. <sighs> I gotta tell you, I'm not in the mood to read pet. I'm not in the mood. I don't know if I'm liking it. I know I'm not enjoying reading it. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, why why does this have to be metaphorical? That's my main takeaway so far. I'm gonna keep reading though because the setup has just happened. I read the new David Sedaris last night instead of reading Pet to fall asleep to. Just keeping it real with y'all. I'll report back after a couple of chapters and when I have to go back to work. Good book mail day for me. I got this book from Pantheon called Chronicles from the Land of the Happiest People. It's set in imaginary Nigeria. Won the Nobel Prize in Literature this author did and I think this is their first novel in half a century. So that's exciting. And then I got Interstate Essays Put out by Soft Skull, one of my favorite publishers. Excited to read this. I saw this popping up on NetGalley and almost requested it. But I got the proof sent to me. Or is this a, no, this is a finished copy actually, so that's cool. All about California, I think. And then lastly, what I'm most excited about, Super Doom, a collection of Melissa Broder's poems, which I think will be funny and wry and sad and weird, just like her. So feeling a little spoiled, but it's all good. It's Wednesday. I got a book from FSG. What could it be if I got a book for FSG? What could it be if, oh, oh my God. It's another Rooney. <laughs> it's another Rooney. I'm Rooney rich, baby. Hi. I'm gonna be honest, work kicked my ass this week. It really did. Uh, why is it so hard to leave for vacation? You know, the amount of prep you have to do to make your, sure your team is set up for success, kind of gnarly. So that being said, I didn't vlog yesterday. I didn't vlog very much today. Right now I'm laying horizontal and looking at TikTok. 
and trying to, you know, not use my brain very much. All of that to say, was this the thoughtful, articulate meditation on adults reading YA? I wanted it to be, and I thought it could be. No. But, you know, it's more a, a conversation. This is a evolution of CJ's intro into reading YA as an adult. I don't think we're gonna really have a grand takeaway from this experience. Uh, or a consensus of where I land. Certainly half of a Nequay game as a book is not enough for me to form an opinion on an entire genre, especially when Sage recommended me such thoughtful books that they think that they think I would like. So all of that to say you're not gonna get a lot of resolution in this video. It's just a part one, baby. It's just a part one. We're just starting the conversation. I am going to try to edit this video now. I feel like my eyes are about to fall out from my brain. I just did my timesheet at work and with my PTO days coming up, it would have been a 50 hour work week. So I packed in that extra 10 hours of work in the three days I was here. Don't you worry. Not fun. But it is what it is. So I'm gonna try it out in this video. Did I say where I'm going? I can't remember. I am going to Mexico with my mom for seven days. I'm gonna be in Mexico with my mom. My mom owns a spa, if you knew that. She owns a little day spa in our tiny hometown in Arizona where she does like facials and laser hair removal. It's like a massage place, it's awesome. And one of the ways me and my mom bond is relaxing together. So I paid my share to accompany her on this all-inclusive spa trip in Tecate, Mexico, about an hour south of San Diego. Really cool like farm to table fitness spa, some gorgeous hikes. It's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna be by the pool so much. I'm gonna be reading. I have to pack. I have to pack my book list but that's where I'm going for a week. Another vacation so close together. Uh, I hope fall chills out a little bit. I feel scattered with YouTube, but this is my hobby. I have to keep remembering that. Uh, miss you guys. I think I'm gonna try to read some more pet before I go. Try to finish it today and tomorrow morning. And hopefully wrap up this first part one vlog, baby. Hi, happy Thursday morning. I am going on vacation today. Like I said last night, my plane leaves at 1 p.m. It's 10 in the morning right now, and I finished Pet by Okwaki Meze last night. So I'm gonna try to do a synopsis of my thoughts. Again, thoughts in progress, baby. We're just uh, learning to read YA. Overall, I liked this book. I don't know if I liked my reading experience of it. I'm glad this exists. I'm glad it found its readership. I love that Quakey Meze is such a varied and talented author that they can write whatever genre they please and it slaps every time. I think that probably takes a lot of skill to be able to write adult NYA fiction and be able to fluctuate your tone and your voice like they do. So that's cool it's probably fun for them to write too but the whole thesis of this video right is me as an adult reading YA fiction whose intended audience is for young adults right this book was interesting it spoke a lot of dualities of good versus evil. I like the theme overall of that adults, even loved ones close to you can cause harm and abuse to children. I think that's a really important lesson that kids need to hear. I really appreciated the friendship between Jam and Redemption. Um, I thought they had a really sweet and balanced and respectful relationship one another and I really enjoyed reading about that. The part that hung me up is just, I guess, the magical realism of this book, right? The metaphor of 
explaining abuse and the evils of this world and who protects us and who doesn't as monsters and angels i don't need that as an adult and it actually stopped me from thinking through some of the larger themes that amezi was trying to explore i think because i don't like reading through metaphor i think when it's so obviously magically inclined does that make sense i mean i'm really trying to think about like what this book did for me and what it didn't i think it's really impactful for kids to think about the safety of illusion breaking down like your family can't hurt you again that's really important lessons that are pretty taboo for people to talk about right it's usually the people closest to you that can hurt you especially as a kid um there were some like really beautiful sentences on a case-by-case -case basis here that reminded me of Amezi's other other work but overall I'm interested in reading another YA book that leans less magical realism to see if that excuse my opinion and makes me enjoy the reading experience a little bit more the whole time I was just like name it name the structures name abuse you know what I mean like I don't need I don't need it to be disguised as like a demon um but yeah it felt like a little quest like it was a tightly wound little novel and we were on an adventure with jam and the representation of diverse family dynamics and characters in this was incredible and not ever questioned or like talked about it wasn't like jam is a trans girl and like what does that look like like everyone in her life supported her non with no questions asked and um i really like the imagining in that sense that society like like her best friend redemption has three parents at home and like that's not a nuclear family structure by any means but it's not weird and no one is hung up about any of these differences right so that's my thoughts about pet again three out of five for me not bad but would i pick this up i don't know why i would pick up a young adult book still i don't please let me know your feelings about this i think this is interesting i think in sage's original video they talked about the market demand for ya ya readership and i think that is really interesting in book trends as we move forward i just still don't know i'm so conflicted about this okay so that's pet this is part one of my cj reading ya series thank you sage for recommending this book and i'll see you again when i do another video about ya i'm gonna go on vacation now bye love you